Hey everyone, Kathy the Vegan Prepper here, and today we're going to be discussing habits and food storage. Let's get into it. Vegan Prepper. Vegan Prepper. Okay, so when I say habits, what do I mean? And this is just something that has been kind of percolating in me for the last several months, sort of recognizing and realizing just how much my own daily habits, uh, the way that I live my life, just, just in the day to day, not even thinking about prepping, but how much of an effect that can have on my preps, what I prep, why I prep, um, the, the way that I store things, it's, it's all affected by the habits of my life. And it's just sort of, I just wanted to talk about it very briefly today with just one example. Most of us who have spent any time whatsoever in the prepping sphere of things have heard the phrase, store what you eat, eat what you store. And that is definitely some wise advice. However, <laughs> with this one example I'd like to share with you, I have realized that there should be kind of like a caveat to that. Um, I would say definitely don't be storing things that you don't eat, but at the same time, maybe rethink some of your habits as far as cooking and food preparation, where you might make a change that will end up being very positive in a lot of ways without ever even necessarily realizing it at first. And so for us and our family, that change came back in 2020, which is pretty famously the start of a lot of people's prepping journeys. Uh, but for us personally, you know, I already had like a closet full of canned beans and all the stuff that we had stocked for our uh, vegan family. And we had our vegan stores and all of that stuff, our rice and, and whatnot. Uh, but come 2020, basically what happened was all of a sudden the stores began to have limits on how much you could purchase of canned beans specifically was a huge one because it was like all of a sudden i guess the panic buying started the world woke up to needing to have food on hand um and so for me personally we began to work through our stores of canned beans very quickly much faster than we could possibly replenish them and that became kind of a wake-up call for me because at the store that we most frequently shopped our limit each transaction was four cans of beans and now our family goes through four cans of beans in just one meal usually <laughs> so i was trying to avoid the stores at the very beginning you know it was extremely scary not really knowing what was going on and not wanting to go to the store but at the same time not wanting all of our food to disappear so we basically ate through a lot of what we had stored up as far as our canned beans and stuff in that initial first kind of first wave hit of summer, we tried to stay home as much as possible and not leave and not go to the store. So um, long story short, possibly too late, I made the decision to begin switching over to dried beans because what I had to do in order to bring in enough food to start replacing the food that we were eating was to switch to dried beans. And this is where I would, this is where I, I began to really learn without realizing I was learning about it, about the habits and our food preparation habits, the habits that we have in our lives relating to uh, these various aspects of our lives. Because I don't need to tell you, I don't think, that there is a difference between just popping open a can of beans and actually cooking some dried beans for your dinner. So now, instead of, you know, preparing a soup and dumping in canned beans, I had to prepare canned beans or dry beans separately before I started my meal so that I would have the beans to put into my food. I also began um, learning dishes that I could cook in my Instant Pot where the beans just went in in the beginning and then I added other things. And so the Instant Pot would be finished with a meal and not only would we have cooked beans in there, we would have, you know, a whole meal. It wasn't that I was having to use, you know, plain cooked beans in another recipe although I still do both all of the time. But there was a major learning curve for me, switching from canned beans to dried beans. And so we're not even talking about changing food, right? Like I, we were already a vegan family of a few years by that point. Um, it was just the way that it was stored, the way that it was prepared was different. My habits were not established for using dried beans. My habits were established for using canned beans. And so it represented a huge learning curve for me. However, for me personally, I believe all of the results have been just extremely positive. 
Okay, so what are the positives that I have seen? Um, and I'm not necessarily trying to convince you, just trying to share with you some of the things that I have observed. And so the number one thing has to be the space savings. I can store far more calories for my family in the same amount of space using dried beans versus canned beans. And I know, of course, that those dried beans still have to be prepared. So there is potentially an advantage to canned beans in that they are already prepared and you don't have to worry about fuel usage or anything like that. Um, and so there's, there's many solutions to that problem. Um, we'll, we'll talk about that maybe in, in a little bit or in just a second. Uh, but overall, I'm, I'm so happy. One of the ways I really know that that is true is like I said at the beginning, we were going through our canned beans faster than we could replace them. And even over this time, we have whittled down our canned bean storage to like, I think I have like four boxes left, which is, if I'm remembering correctly, 32 cans of black beans and that's basically what we have on hand as canned bean storage because I'm not going to get rid of it completely like it is still handy like yeah for, for having something that you don't have to cook to have something on hand say you know something happens and I do need to throw a meal together quickly yeah sure I'll have some canned beans I know I can can my own but I don't I don't feel like it okay <laughs> I'm <laughs> totally honest, you don't feel like it, okay? So I will still get a few canned beans from the store. Um, and then, I mean, I do, so these are some home canned black beans I have, um, and I do have those on hand. Uh, but for the most part, I like to just store my dried beans um, myself. And if I'm gonna preserve them, I tend to dehydrate them. And I have a lot of videos on that. Um, but anyway, regardless, it takes up way less space. It's taking us way longer to work through the buckets of dried beans than it ever did for us to work through our stock of canned beans. Um, the cost savings is pretty great. Um, at first, it doesn't seem like there's a huge cost savings uh, comparatively between the canned beans and the dried beans. Uh, but for one thing, I have noticed that there is a major cost difference. Even again, we freed up yet more money in our budget um, not just from going vegan, but from switching over from canned beans to dried beans, because I can buy a giant 25 pound bag of, of beans and we'd be eating, we will be eating on that for probably about a year because we have a variety of beans that we eat. We're not focusing on only one. It takes us quite a while to go through those things. And then also when you're purchasing the beans at the scale at which we purchased them, which is 25 pound bags, multiple types. And so we've probably got, you know, 150 pounds of beans on this shelf if we dumped you know, all 25 pound bags or 25 pound buckets into, or 25 pound bags into the buckets. It's like, you know, 150, 175, possibly 200 pounds of beans on the shelf if I have, if I have done that. But um, as another thing, these buckets, they, they look like impressive. These are not our long-term storage. These are our working storage. They've all got gamma lids that just unscrew. This is like just my pantry. This is just what I, what I grab from when I'm making my food. Um, and so like, for instance, when I calculate my calorie storage of my preps, nothing in these buckets counts. This is all zero. And so that is one of the ways that I have also built a buffer into my own preps, into my prepping system, um, is no none of this gets counted. As soon as a bag gets poured into one of these, then it gets basically crossed off the list of what I have stored as if I had used it, even though it just goes into a bucket. And so that is one of the ways that I've built a little bit of redundancy and like extra space into my preps, just as an FYI. But so the point being that we work through these. And so like, for instance, this one is, is very light because it's like down to here. And so this one's getting ready to be refilled. Once it gets refilled, I will put a new label here with a new date telling me. So then that tells me how long it takes us to work through a bucket of black beans. And all of that was a little extra that I didn't manage or I didn't plan to share. But regardless, space savings, money savings, major pluses on the dried bean front for me. <laughs> Let's talk versatility, not just in the prepared items that you can make from your dried beans, but from the dried beans themselves. They are versatile in their application. So I'm thinking of just one bean, for instance, pinto beans, right? You can store it in so many different ways in a prepared form from a can of you know vegetarian chili to refried beans to just plain cans of pinto beans. Um, you, you have many options of, of just storing like separate kind of cans of beans, or you could store just one thing. You could store just one 
uh, dry bean, the pinto bean, that will cover all of that stuff. Obviously with, you know, some flavorings, you know, you need to store the things that you need to make the dishes, but overall still, you're saving a lot of space and a lot of time even, because you can pr make a giant batch earlier in the week and then turn that into multiple things. And you're saving time because you're not going to the grocery store nearly as much. Or if you realize all of a sudden, I ran out of my cans of, um, I ran out of my cans of refried beans, is, well, as long as you have an instant pot, you can pretty quickly throw together a batch of pinto beans and then go ahead and get that ready. But what if you don't have an instant pot? Um, what if you don't have power? What if you need to cook things um, with less power, you know, utilize uh, saving of fuel? I mean, there's so many options. I, I did touch on this a little bit in my um, prepping on a budget video, um, and I definitely need to do a more detailed video on solving these problems. But but just as as an idea, because this video is focused more on habits than it is about talking about all these 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 things. Um, is to make sure that you maintain uh, what's known as a growth mindset, that you're always looking for solutions to problems. Don't get caught in the problem and then get stuck. Look at solutions. I, I lean into the problem. Say, okay, I don't know if I have the means to cook this without power. So now let's start looking into means of cooking without power. We have a video I'll link down below where we did a firebox and um, wonder bag test with pinto beans, um, where basically we just boiled the pinto beans for about 15 minutes on the firebox and then covered it and stuck it into a wonder bag, which is basically a thermal heating device. Um, and then you, it's like a, it's a big, it looks like a pumpkin. It's really cool actually. And then we left it for six hours. And after six hours, we had perfectly cooked pinto beans. And all we did was 15 minutes on a fire direct. Um, we also have like the all American sun oven. I don't think I would recommend trying to cook larger beans in there. Um, but I don't know, like, like you can stick to smaller beans. Um, but also thinking of smaller beans. So for instance, any type of bean that you can store split, a split bean is going to take way less time and fuel and energy to cook than the counterparts that are whole. For example, here are some split red lentils and these take maybe eight to 10 minutes to cook just on a stove. Um, and they're, so they're practically instant as far as the dried beans goes. And they are very versatile. There's split mung beans. There's all kinds of split beans that take a lot less time to cook than the whole counterparts. If we keep leaning into that problem, what is another solution? Well, another solution is being able to grind these into your own bean flour. We're talking about versatility again. Every single one of these things can be ground and turned into something that can cook much more quickly. If you look online, and I'll find a couple, I'll put them down below, you can find recipes, and I'm back to those pinto beans, for almost instant refried beans where if you take your pinto beans and you grind them into a flour, you can cook them on the stove in maybe five to seven minutes and it turns into basically a refried bean that didn't take very much long to cook at all. So you don't have to even start with cooking the whole bean. You could grind into a flour and then cook um, the ground bean into something else. Um, and so that can go for for every one of these things on here, if you ever look, if you see lentil flour, like for making dosas and flatbreads, if you see, um, actually I've made those, they're delicious. If you, it's like the easiest way to make tortillas on this earth is to do um, red lentil tortillas. I will link those down, a recipe I found for those down below, which worked beautifully and was delicious and wonderful. I highly recommend it. Um, but yeah, just, just doing, um, your ground beans and you can turn, uh, again, ground pinto beans into refried beans. You can turn ground um, chickpeas into a hummus-like preparation, or you can also use chickpea flour in like so many applications. If you want ideas for how to utilize your beans in ways that you have never thought of before, I would heartily encourage you to look into Indian cuisines. They have so much. So for instance, they make so many different kinds of breads um, for all kinds of things that are just gluten-free, not, not because they're like trying to be on trend, <laughs> but because, you know, like their, their own rich culture with thousands and thousands of years of history and they just like didn't for the most part just didn't have wheat so they have a whole cuisine built on beans <laughs> and rice there is so much information there like little like fried lentil um we call it donut things i'm so sorry i don't know the name um but like there's so many different things where they have taken 
um, flours that are made from ground beans and turned it into bread items. Um, and so these are great resources to have, great ideas to look into. Again, versatility, not just in the prepared item itself, but in the use of the dry item. So like, did you think about potentially having your lentils on the shelf, but then also turning that into like a tortilla? <laughs> basically um it's more like a dose of flatbread but but really like there's just so much there <laughs> but one more really beautiful positive thing that i have noticed in my life as a result of changing just this one habit is that i'm meal planning now um because it just sort of got to the point where it became too much to try to think every single day about which bean i was making and what i was doing so i realized i finally have to figure out how to get over this thing i have against meal planning, thinking it's going to be so difficult. And now just in the last month, so it's only been like a month, but it's incredible what a huge difference it has made in my life, just having a meal plan. And now I feel like I'm a convert. I'm going to be meal planning for the rest of my life. It's so wonderful to be able to plan and to tell myself the day before, make your batch of garbanzo beans, make your batch of lentils. Like even today, on my meal plan, I have um, a task that says make lentils because tomorrow we're making lentil loaf for lunch. And so I want to have those lentils made and cold in the fridge before I make that recipe. Um, and that is another uh, tip or idea or trick for anybody who, for instance, has made beans in the instant pot, like in a pressure cooker. Um, and then they come out and then you say, oh, they're just pure mush. Um, I can't you know, I can't stand them. Like, and you want to go back to canned beans. I have seen that actually before people talking about um, their beans and their instant pot becoming total mush. Um, and so one thing that I would like to say about that is the fact that um, obviously when they're coming out and they're fresh, um, all those starches have been cooked and heated. They're hot and they're very soft at that point. However, if you allow them to cool, because when you think about it, a canned bean has gone through the cooking process, but it has essentially cooled. It's now room temperature in the can. And so those starches have had a chance to kind of um, seize back up. They've cooled and they've gotten harder again. Um, and so the same thing can happen with your beans when you cook them in the instant pot and then you take them and you put them in your fridge. That lets them get cool so that they become a bit more solid and that might be a little bit more like the texture that you're used to, especially if you've only ever really eaten canned beans before. Um, it's not necessarily the fault of the instant pot, although it also could be that you might want to cook it for a little less time next time. Uh, like just, just take a couple minutes off the time and see you know, see how it goes. Just experiment with it. Um, you can always turn it into kind of a bean mash on purpose, turn it into a dip, uh, mix it into a soup to, to thicken up the soup. You know, there's always something to do with it. But again, for me personally, I do think certain things, especially like a lentil loaf, are better served from a bean that has been cooled. Um, and so that it's a little harder. Um, and then it just sort of translates a little bit better into certain recipes. And so lentil loaf is one of those. And yeah, so my task today is make lentils. So yeah, I wasn't planning to talk about that either, but it is what it is. <laughs> Hopefully I accomplished my goal with this video, which is really to get us thinking about our food preparation and food storage habits and seeing if there's any way that we could make little tweaks here and there to make our pantries uh, more sustainable potentially for our families, but also just, just like easier to stock, um, just, just better in so many ways. Like, the more of the pre-packaged items from the store that we can eliminate, I feel the better in, in a lot of ways. There's definitely certainly exceptions um, and certain exceptions for, for anything that we say, right? And like I said, I do still have some canned beans, but obviously the vast majority of my storage now is devoted to dry beans. Um, and so, yeah, there's like pluses and minuses and, and all of that, but I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Was there anything that you like suddenly thought of as, as, as we were talking today that, that you thought, huh, maybe I could change this, maybe I could change that. Um, and just let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions um, or anything, let me know down below. I love hearing from you guys, but I hope that you got something really good out of this video and some new, new thoughts going. And as always, I hope the rest of your day is good and your life stays wonderful. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one. Bye. And you know, whether you're storing just plain pinto beans, uh, refried beans, or say like a can of vegetarian chili, um, it was, that was this finger. Oh my gosh, you guys.